so and expansively. Uh, uh, if there is an uh, if there's an opportunity, for example, then to potentially sell your interest to Comcast, if Brian Roberts were interested, that's a conversation you would have. Witness there a little bit. I said we're open minded. We're, we will be open minded. I just want to make sure because I think the assumption has been that you guys will buy what you don't already own of Hulu. And I think I'm suggesting that isn't necessarily the case. Okay. Um, it's not that far away from kind of starting to make a decision, right? Why it's on my mind. <laughs> Understood. Something else that I don't know if it's on your mind or not is Nelson Peltz. Um, we obviously had him on some time ago, taking a lot of shots uh, at the company, although you seem to have met some of his objectives even very recently with your announcements. But I wonder, Bob, why engage at all? You know, you've got so much on your plate. A proxy fight is distracting by its very nature. Um, why not just say, oh, he's one guy, put him on the board, and over with? Well, I have to ask the question is really why, not why not. Um, a number of people suggested, like, why not? Why not just let him on the board? Yeah. I think you have to start with our board, which he's been quite critical of. In fact, he's been critical of one member of our board. We have a very diverse board, diverse in gender, diverse in ethnicity, diverse in business background. And each one of those board members comes to the boardroom with very relevant business background. You look at Mary Barra and Mark Parker and Safra Katz running big companies, global brands, complex companies in a complex world. You look at um, Calvin McDonald from Lululemon, you know, an, an upstart of sorts, retail brand. Um, Amy Chang and Carolyn Everson and Francis D'Souza come out of the tech world. Um, Mel Lagomasino, who is a private in private wealth management, probably manages more money than Nelson Peltz, wakes up every morning thinking about her investors, for right. and she brings that into the boardroom. And then there's Michael Froman, who Nelson has, has come after. Yes, he's come Why? after him specifically because with the universal proxy, that kind of is the easiest way to do. But, but Give me more votes at, than him. But let's look at Michael Froman as a Disney board member. He has experience at Citibank. He's a vice chairman of MasterCard. He was U.S. trade representative in the Obama administration, someone that I spoke with during that period of time about global trade initiatives, global regulation, um, a number of other issues that were extremely relevant to us and at Disney and continues to be. So we have, we have a good board. We have a board, by the way, that holds us accountable, that represents shareholder interests well. Uh, that challenges us all the time, that actually and served me very well when I was CEO in my prior tenure with, with good ideas, with, with, uh, with input that had real value to the shareholders of this so company. You so even, you start yeah. with, there is not a need. Plus, he has not articulated either a vision or even ideas that are of particular value to us. Now, some he has, but we were already working on those. When I came in, we talked about cost-cutting right away. We reorganized the company. We've recommitted to profitability and streaming. So where, where is the need? And, and either, by the way, just from a shareholder perspective, where is the need? In addition, obviously, I have a, a, a big job right now yeah. uh, uh, to contend with. And focusing my time, my energy, and the time and energy of the entire team is extremely important. Disruption from a force like that is not something that would be healthy to the shareholders of this company. You surprised that Ike Perlmutter, somebody obviously, I mean, you bought Marvell, has been so involved with trying to get Pelts on the board. Is there a feud between the two of you, perhaps, that's fueling this? Well, I think that's a, that's a curious dynamic that um, I think you know, our filings indicate that both Ike and Nelson uh, were working together to try to encourage the board or convince the board to put Nelson on the board. They have a relationship that dates back quite some time. Uh, we bought Marvel in... 2009, I promised Ike a job that he would continue to run Marvel after that. Not forever, necessarily, but after that. Uh, and um, in 2015, he was intent on, um, on firing Kevin Foggy, who was running Marvel's studio or the movie making at the time. And, um, and I thought that was a mistake and stepped in to prevent that from happening. Uh, I think Kevin is an incredibly, incredibly talented executive. The, you know, the Marvel track record speaks for itself. And so I moved the movie-making operation of Marvel out from under Ike into the movie studio so under, that, under Alan that Horn. that created some ill will, you think? Well, you'd have to, you'd have to ask Ike about that, but I, I, let's put it this way. He was not happy about it, and I think that unhappiness um, exists today. Yeah. And, I, you know, is, what, what the link is between that 
and Nelson and his relationship, I think that's something that you can speculate about. I won't.